Falcon Soprano, and I'm the Director of Communications for our Glorious Convention People's Party, by the grace of God. And I'm constitutionally compliant. I would like to emphasize that and also appeal to the media present and all other media houses across the country that whenever we have internal party issues and you investigate, do not just report. With you respect, do a story. Trust what we say, but verify. So without much ado, we'll move ahead to today's business. Um, ladies and gentlemen and fellow Ghanaians, and um, we're all, you know, continue with our daily business in our country when on July the 9th, the Honorable Dr. Um, Matthew Ofori, um, um, MP for Mencia South, came out to say that your Kwame Nkrumah, you know, in a derogatory fashion, referring to the French president as you, even your Kwame Nkrumah is no match for um, President Kufuado with regards to developmental works, etc. And as you all are aware, people in Ghana across the world were really taken aback by the derogatory manner in which the former Minister of Energy referred to the first president. And um, subsequently, um, on fr last week Friday, um, I think the 12th of um, July, um, the Honorable former Minister and now Vice Presidential Candidate for the New Patriotic Party came out to apologize. And the Convention People's Party, we said we were happy that he apologized, but that would give a more comprehensive response to his apology today. And so we are happy to have you all here today as we go about the business of actually officially responding to um, Dr. Matthew Opoku, Honorable MP for Mencia South. Um, to begin with, um, we believe that it is a good thing that um, Dr. Opoku Tempe was able to, you know, you know, garner the humility necessary to even apologize. We thought he wouldn't. Uh, he came across as someone who wouldn't. Um, but we were, you know, grateful that he actually recognized that he was on the wrong path. Listen to the voice of the people, which is the voice of God, and, you know, apologized. We are happy about the apology, but it doesn't mean we have accepted the apology. We appreciate the fact that the former minister, Matthew Poku um, with respect to him, came to his senses, his political senses, so to speak, and did the right thing. However, um, the Convention People's Party is challenging Dr. Matthew Poku the communication director, myself, Sylvester Sapon Soprano, I'm standing on behalf of the Con Convention People's Party and challenging Dr. Matthew Opoku Trent, Honorable, to a debate, to a debate, so that, you know, apart from the derogatory statements he made about the French president and his apology, so that he can actually show Ghanaians what he meant, because in his apology he said that um, he didn't mean to be derogatory. Well, what did he really mean to be? And so an opportunity to be in debate with us gives Dr. Matthew Poku and uh, the chance to tell Daniels precisely what he means by um, what we consider to be a wild statement. In fact, that President Okufuado's developmental works supersede that of, you know, His Excellency, the first president, Dr. Sajifo, Dr. Kwan Nkoma. Um, Daniels should take note that the independent struggle that the CPP, under the leadership of Osajifo, Dr. Kwan Nkoma, mobilized, organized, and led the Ghanaian masses to wage and win independence on March the 6th, 1956, from the United Kingdom, the British, was underpinned by a vision. It was underpinned by a vision. You know, and how well or badly a head of state or of government of Ghana has performed or a uh, comparison between any two or more heads of state or government of Ghana must therefore be based on the degree and extent to which each head of state or government has contributed to the realization of the vision that underpinned the independence struggle. In other words, there was a reason why we went for independence. There was a vision. And the Convention People's Party, led by President Kwame Nkrumah, was able to attain that vision. So Ghana is a state on a mission to attain a vision. And we are saying that every subsequent president, after President Kwame Nkrumah, and indeed President Kwame Nkrumah, 
every action that he took should be measured against the vision of the new republic of ghana that is now over 60 years old you see the original vision for the ghana project as president Kufuado likes to call it you know therefore has two main um, component parts and um, the first one was decolonization which the convention people's party achieved under the leadership of president Kwame Nkrumah. and the second item is the socialist transformation and reconstruction of our economy the economy of the republic of ghana and as a result the cpp and president Kwame Nkrumah, uh, through their strength of vision and commitment to delivery on their promises delivery on their promises delivery on their premises, the, uh, because of that, the good people of the Gold Coast, Ashanti and the Northern Territories at the time, voted massively for the Convention People's Party in 1951, 1954, 1956, and 1960. The CPP won four elections on the trot, a feat no other political party in Ghana has ever achieved. And that's why when people say that the CPP cannot win elections, we tell them that they have no sense of history. We won four elections on the trot. And we'll do it again in the near future. Unfortunately for Ghana, however, this soaring vision for our nation has been completely abandoned in the Fourth Republic by the duopoly of President Ekufado, his MPP, and President Mahama and his NDC. The hard won independence and sovereignty of Ghana and the promise of work and happiness assured by the CPP under President Kwame Nkrumah were replaced by the external co optation of our country's policy making by agents of the former colonizer. In other words, the PNDC and the NPP allow the World Bank, IMF, and other creditor nations to structure the context within which their client, Ghana, a less developed country, formulated its economic policy making. We'll be sending you a document that I'm holding, and what I just said is sourced from page 125 of the book, Third World to First World by One Touch, written by Ghana's Crusading Engineer Wood and myself as a co-author, Sylvester Sarkon Soprano. Under the PMDC and the New Patriotic Party, Ghana has been forced to accept extreme and politically dangerous measures in order to secure economic assistance from the agents of our former colonizer. And ladies and gentlemen of the press, and I'm getting to the end, ladies and gentlemen of the press, fellow citizens, this is the context within which Honorable Dr. Matthew Poku Pente, MP Shasau, and vice presidential nominee of the new patriotic party insists president Kufuado and his mpp have somehow done a better job for ghana's economy than the iconic and mercurial president Kwame Nkrumah and his glorious convention people's party context is important here and it is instructive to note that the population of ghana at the time when the cpp was in power in the 1960s was around five million citizens showing the magnitude of the CPP's achievements. Plus, there was no internet at the time. If the CPP and President Kwame Nkrumah had access to the internet, the way President Kufuado is on the internet every day, we would have just you know, transformed the country in the shortest possible time from a first world, third world country to a first world country. So what are some of the developmental projects for which the Convention People's Party and President Nkrumah are renowned for? Let us consider just a few. The first item is independence. The first and most important achievement of the Convention People's Party and President Kwame Nkrumah was in winning Ghana's independence from colonial occupation by the British. We would like Napo to tell the world where President Kwame Nkrumah, where President Kufuado has done anything that compares to securing independence for Ghana. Let me repeat CPP, led by President Kwame Nkrumah, secured independence for Ghana. That is one single, very critical item. We are all Ghanaians because of that fact. We want um, Napo to tell us what President Ekufuado has done that compares to securing independence for the Republic of Ghana. Um, we would also like to look at energy, which incidentally happens to be the immediate past portfolio of Napo. Ladies and gentlemen, um, guided by the CPP's famed seven year development plan, the core of the CPP and President Kwame Nkrumah's drive to provide a large and stable pool of cheap energy in Ghana to power the development of our bauxite reserves into the industrial production of aluminum. Indeed, as the record shows, Lloyd Kapila, who was the lawyer for Kaiser 
Kaiser's Bonsa project, that is the financiers of the Akosho Dam, he said, according to Lloyd Kaplan, the lawyer for Kaiser, the, the financiers of Akosho Dam, he said, we are greatly concerned that if we located within Ghana or had the bauxite and power necessary to have an integrated aluminum operation, that someday our project, if it were profitable, might be nationalized by the government and taken away from us. In other words, um, you know, we were producing power for Ghana not because we wanted to put on air conditioner or cook some food at home. We wanted to industrialize the country. And so towards these ends of providing stable and cheap energy to the, for the rapid industrialization of Ghana, the CPP under President Nkoma, on Monday, January 22, 1962, signed the master agreement with Edgar Kaiser of Kaiser Aluminum for the construction of the Akoshombo Dam as the bulwark and the anchor of what the CPP envisaged as Ghana's energy triad involving and including the Akoshombo Dam supported by the Bui Dam and the first atomic reactor in Africa at the Ghana Atomic Energy Commission, which was under construction at Kwadenya at the time of the coup d'etat in 1966. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure Honorable Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe will tell us about President Ekufuado's achievements in the energy sector in comparison to the CPP and President Nkome's efforts when he arrives at the debate. Housing is the next item we'll look at as the last but one. Let us compare the record on housing between President Ekufuado and President Kwame Nkome. As you can already see, this conversation is now clearly a, a father and son affair. It is a father and son affair when you compare President Ekufuado to President Kwame Nkome. It's a father and son affair. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, within the period of the seven year development plan, the CPP and President Nkoma provided over 17,100 individual housing units across the Republic of Ghana from Kole Gonong in Greater Accra, which had 1,068 units, to Bogdatanga in the Upper East, which had 12, to Ho in the Volta region, which had 228, to Tapa in the Western region with 819, etc., etc. I am sure. That Napo can tell us how President Ekufuado's housing project at Pupiasi in the Greater Accra region and any others compares to the record of the Convention People's Party and of President Kwame Nkrumah. And then, industrialization. The CPP, led by the President Kwame Nkrumah, expanded the economy of Ghana at an unprecedented pace, which has not been matched since. As President Kwame Nkrumah stressed, at the OAU conference in Addis Ababa in 1964, President Kwame Nkrumah, he said, we cannot afford to place our needs, our development, our security to the gate of camels and donkeys. This is because we have emerged in an age of science and technology, where poverty, ignorance, and diseases are no longer the masters by the retreating force of mankind. And so with such a mindset, the Convention People's Party embarked upon an unprecedented industrialization drive that began to transform the Gajisbadian structure of the economy. We established over 400 country, factories across the country, anchored by the flagship Ghana Industrial Holding Corporation, GIHOP, which was comprised of 22 strategic industries as our flagship um, industrial core. Taking into consideration the size of the economy and the population of the country at the time, we look forward to hearing from Napo about how President Ekufuado's performance, about how President Ekufuado's performance is somehow better than that of President Kwame Nkrumah with regards to the industrialization of our economy. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen of the media and fellow citizens, we would, um, we could go on and on. We could go on and on and start telling you about and continue telling you about the CPP to take all day. And um, however, the communications department, the communications team of the Convention People's Party, led by myself, Sylvester Soprano, as the director of communication, we are challenging Dr. Matthew Opoku Pente to a debate on the record of President Ekufuado versus the record of President Kwame Nkrumah in two weeks from today. Let me repeat. In two weeks from today, we are challenging Dr. Matthew Okoku Prempe to a debate on the record of President Ekufuado versus the record of President Kwame Nkrumah at the British Council Hall in Accra. Or if Dr. Nako prefers, 
We can have the debate at the MPP headquarters. We are ready to have the debate at the MPP headquarters any day. In fact, if Napo wants, we can have that debate in his bedroom. We hope you will not be afraid to show up for the debate. Thank you very much.